A white picket fence surrounding a well-manicured oval, a common sight in many Australian towns and cities. Australia is a country which loves its cricket, and we're pretty good at it too. So, as you can imagine, a cricket-loving doctor on Doctor Who fascinated me as a child back in the 1980s. And that doctor, the fifth, played by Peter Davison, remains my favourite in the series. But what about that costume? We're regularly told in articles that Davo is wearing cricket gear, sometimes the clothes of an Edwardian cricketer. But is he really? In this video, I'm going to take apart the Davison costume piece by piece and answer, once and for all, whether the Fifth Doctor really is wearing a cricket outfit. You know, I drop in from time to time myself and nothing on earth changes quite so often as the fashion. When the Fifth Doctor's costume was being hashed out, it was designer Colin Lavers who ended up having quite a hand in its look. Now, was this because Lavers was some legendary designer who knew Doctor Who inside out? Uh, no. Lavers had only worked on the series once before, designing on The Power of Kroll back in 1978. As simple as this might seem, Lavers was the costume designer recruited for For to Doomsday, which you'll likely know isn't Peter Davison's first adventure, but is the story he recorded first. As such, and almost by accident in a sense, Lavers ended up designing what the Fifth Doctor would wear in that adventure, which meant what he would have to wear back in his debut story Castrovalva, which actually wouldn't be recorded until fourth in the production block, and then, of course, onwards into the seasons beyond. John Nathan Turner had seen Peter Davison at a cricket match and decided to bring cricket into the new characterization, recalled Lavers, in a 1982 interview with the fanzine Axos, later reprinted in Doctor Who magazine in 2019. He sent me a memo setting out the basic requirements of the new outfit. The initial brief from JNT was for a morning coat, striped trousers, and a collapsible top hat. This is a fascinating snippet when I hear morning coat, striped trousers, and top hat. I literally think of this day at the races style look more than anything to do with cricket. I wish there were more to the quote. Did JNT actually mean grey striped trousers like these? Regardless, we're told that JNT wanted a cricketing vibe to the fifth doctor. But how did this play out into the final design that we got on screen? Let's examine the Davison costume piece by piece. Starting here with what's on the Fifth Doctor's feet, a pair of white leather boots. These boots can be seen in great detail in many 1980s publicity shots, including the sole, and from this we can see that they definitely aren't cricket boots. I believe the brand originally used with the big red logo on the sole is called Zeds. His boots were bought in a shoe shop so they could easily and cheaply be replaced when they wore out or lost colour, said Lavers, confirming the commercial nature of the footwear. These were certainly not a bespoke item. Now, why do I say these definitely aren't cricket boots? It's simple. Here are some images of cricket boots from the early 20th century. While they are more crudely made than what's on the doctor's feet, what I want you to actually take notice of is that when it comes to cricket footwear, there are spikes on the sole. Something you will find on cricket boots of 100 years ago or cricket shoes of today. If you're playing cricket on turf, like they would have in the Edwardian era, indoor cricket wasn't a thing back then, folks, you'll be wearing footwear with spiked soles. So what the Fifth Doctor is wearing instead with its flat rubber sole can only be a modern white leather boot that wouldn't be worn for playing cricket, but which was possibly made for something like basketball, aerobics, or even just a fashion sort of footwear to wear with jeans. In later TV appearances such as 2007's Time Crash, the Fifth Doctor has similar white leather footwear to his three 1980 seasons, but has moved on from the Zeds, which presumably had been lost, perished, maybe even nicked from the BBC wardrobe department in the 23 years between appearances. But the effect in his modern appearances is the same. He's simply wearing some kind of sporty white leather footwear. No more, no less. So, on the whole, and if we're being kind, 
The Fifth Doctor's footwear evokes a kind of early to mid 20th century cricket boot if you squint your eyes and don't think about the sole at all. But to be crystal clear on this, they definitely aren't cricket boots. No way, no how. Sorry, Pete. The trousers are an interesting part of Davison's costume, with their striped, basically pyjama-like pattern for seasons 19 and 20, and then a different sort of stripe for season 21. So did cricketers wear striped trousers like this? While I suppose anything is possible, and I'm loath to say such trousers never made an appearance on a cricket field ever in the history of humankind, when you go back and look at drawings of cricketers deep into the 19th century, and then forwards again into the 20th century where Davison's basic look is supposed to come from, white or cream flannels are present in every image I've come across. You're looking at a selection of them on screen right now. Even when you come across images where the cricketers in question are wearing quite wildly coloured shirts, either of a plain colour, stripes, checks, even polka dots, and I have to say looking quite groovy versus how you might think of 1800s cricketers dressing, the trousers in these images are always uniformly white or cream. They just are. So where JNT got the idea of striped trousers for his cricketing doctor, I have no idea. Unless, of course, he was originally thinking of grey striped pants, as discussed earlier, which then morphed into a lighter colour to be more sympathetic to the lighter tones of cricket uniforms and the colours Lavers was using in general. Sadly, there's no specific quote about this. Whatever the reason, in some ways, this may have been helpful for the overall design. A straightforward cricket outfit would have given us big problems, from lighting to keeping it clean, said Lavers. Around this time, it should be noted that veteran Doctor Who costume designer June Hudson also sketched out a look for the fifth Doctor, mentioning specifically that Davison should be wearing cricket whites. Now, while this could mean the white shirt, I also think it refers to the trousers, particularly as they aren't striped in her sketch. In the end, however, it's clear that JNT was asking for stripes, stripes would be more practical, and stripes Davo got. But back to the question, is Davo wearing cricket trousers? No, he is not. Perhaps one of the least controversial elements of the Fifth Doctor's costume is the shirt, and even that doesn't escape comment when it comes to its, um, embellishments. On one side of the coin, Davison wears a white, long-sleeved, collared shirt. It's hard to call this shirt historically inaccurate because, broadly speaking, it fits the bill for an early 1900s cricketer who would have worn a basic buttoned shirt, more like a business shirt, mine as the breast pocket, than anything we'd consider as a sporting kind of cut or fabric today. Peter's shirts were made to my design by a theatrical bespoke shirt maker who usually makes shirts for pop singers and variety artists, said Lavers. But the elephant in the room, of course, are those damn question marks on the shirt's collar. The story goes that this was not part of Lavers' idea for the costume at all, but a specific request from producer John Nathan Turner, who wrote in a memo to him, I do feel that the Doctor Who shirt with the question mark on the lapels is worth hanging on to. Funnily enough, the question marks had appeared the year before on Tom Baker's shirts in his final season, as designed by June Hudson, who notably didn't continue the motif into her sketches for Davison's costume, so any annoyance at the question marks I think can be squarely aimed at JNT insisting on them rather than either of the two designers. Personally, I don't like the question marks. I don't believe someone like the Doctor would go out of their way to adorn their clothing with the symbol. Oh, look at me. I'm so enigmatic. It's just silly, really. When you stop and think about it, it makes no real sense. So, yeah, don't even get me started on what they did with Sylvester McCoy's costume in 1987. Quickly moving on, another aspect of the Fifth Doctor shirt to mention, and clearly part of Laver's design, is the red trim on the underside of the neck and collar, and also the underside of where the buttons fasten. 
The latter is an area that's hardly ever seen, as the shirt is usually under Davo's cricket jumper, but it's there, trust me. Of course, in season 21, the shirt changes slightly so that the neck and collar are still red, however the strip running down the buttons is green. In case the question, are these embellishments there to make the shirt more cricket related needs answering, that answer would be no, not at all. Obviously question marks aren't a cricket thing and the coloured trim plays no part in enhancing the shirt when it comes to cricket specifically. It's just a bit of decoration. So is the Fifth Doctor's shirt kosher when it comes to cricket? Broadly speaking, no, it's a made up look. Without the question marks, and ideally without the strip of colour around the neck and buttons, it could get by in the early to mid 20th century though. At last, we're getting into an item of the costume that was absolutely unequivocally meant to evoke cricket. Well, once they decided to have a cricket jumper rather than the knitted waistcoat that was originally sketched out in Laver's costume design for Davo. Let's start by noting that there are three versions of the Davison jumper. His season 1920 jumper, his season 21 jumper, and the jumper he wore in Dimensions in Time, which perhaps fairly hardly anyone seems to remember being a different jumper, but it is, and I thought it would be fun to mention its existence here, especially as it looks so good. Commenting on the season 19 jumper he was responsible for, Lavers offers, the jumper was a lucky find. A real cricket jumper would have been too white, too long, and too hot. Peter's jumper is off-white, knitted, cotton. The shop sold the jumper with two sorts of stripes. The one you see, and another of blue, green, and yellow stripes. The program uses a lot of colour separation overlay effects, and the colours for that are blue, green or yellow, so the second jumper would have been unusable. The jumper is a fashion garment, so the shop had chosen stripes that coordinated with their clothes and not a county cricket club. As an aside, the fashion house Ralph Lauren, which similarly sells cricket jumpers as fashion items, says that the style has been favoured for more than a century by athletes on both sides of the Atlantic and is defined by a cable knit pattern, usually in cream, as well as a v-neck and striped trim, which represents school or club colours. A UK company called Alan Payne goes one step further, declaring that the enduring cable knit was more or less unheard of before its founder, William Payne, evolved it into a cricket jumper in the early 1920s. Which is interesting as I recently typed England Cricket Team 1910 into Google, and lo and behold, here's a group of players in the Edwardian era and they're already wearing cable knit jumpers. So we're on solid ground that whoever popularized it, cricket jumpers were an Edwardian thing, and Davison wears some great examples, albeit the first one not being based on a real team. So a big tick here for the jumper. The fifth doctor's coat is an interesting item of clothing. It's generally referred to as a frock coat, and sure, it's loosely based on an Edwardian or even Victorian frock coat style, albeit in a colour scheme uncommon, if not unknown, in that era. With its contrast piping, it's also more like one of the shorter jackets that John Pertwee might have worn in one of his stories. But is it cricket related? Well, no, not as far as players go at least. While you can certainly find images of Edwardian men in frock coats, they're not playing cricket. They might be going to watch some cricket, but they're not playing it. And their coats are generally cut differently to Davos anyway, usually being double-breasted and are also seen in dark colours. I'd be fascinated to see someone in, say, 1905 in a beige frock coat. What is a cricket thing, meanwhile, are shorter blazers, such as the one sketched out in the June Hudson piece that we looked at earlier in this video. Sometimes a solid colour, sometimes with piping, sometimes striped. Think of Ford Prefect in the original series of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yes, folks, blazers are a big deal in cricket. So maybe not so oddly, Lavers actually wanted to dress the Fifth Doctor in a cricket blazer, but this was nixed by JNT, 
who feared comparisons with the aforementioned Ford Prefect, who was pretty well known on TV screens in 1981 and presumably seen as a bit of a comedy character, and this would be a negative. I think that's a great shame, as a nice cricket blazer or even a group of them with different coloured piping or stripes would have looked much better and thrown some variety into the mix rather than that strange beige thing Davo was made to wear across his entire era. As it stands, Lavers makes a brave argument in Doctor Who magazine that the coat was cut similarly to cricket umpires' coats, and I can see where that thought comes from, design-wise, I can, but umpires aren't cricketers, and that coat, at that length, in beige, no, it's not what a cricketer would wear in any era. Sitting atop the Fifth Doctor's head in many stories is his trusty, foldable Panama hat. Not only was this a nice nod to the First Doctor, who wore a Panama hat in The Chase and also The Daleks' Master Plan, but it's a reasonably valid hat to use with a cricketing theme. But ironically, it almost didn't happen. Recall earlier the initial brief from JNT for a morning coat, striped trousers, and a collapsible top hat? The hat was so the Doctor could produce a cricket ball from it from time to time, said Lavers. <laughs> Once he successfully talked JNT out of the top hat idea, it was Lavers who found a different type of collapsible headwear. The hat is a Panama straw, which, because it has a creased crown, may be pressed flat and then rolled. These hats can still be bought in London hat shops and are designed for packing in suitcases, he says. So, is a Panama hat cricket-centric? Funnily enough, yes it is. And so is the top hat. While modern cricketers tend to just wear their woolen team caps in test matches, baseball-style caps in one day and T20 matches, and floppy sun hats in any version of the game, back in time there were all sorts of hats being worn on the field, including, but not limited to, top hats, straw hats, and Panamas. As such, the Fifth Doctor's hat might not scream cricket to you, but could have been worn in the early 20th century, and no one would have blinked. So, where does this leave us? Davo's boots are wrong. They aren't cricket boots. That said, you wouldn't wear cricket boots outside of a cricket oval due to their spikes anyway, so the footwear needs a rethink if you want to retain a cricket theme, but something that would be worn outside of a game. His trousers are wrong. They should be white or cream flannels. The shirt is okay. It needs to lose the embellishments, like the question marks though. The jumper is good. The jumper is solidly a cricket-centric item of clothing, and indeed, the most cricket item of all the Doctor's clothes. Which is funny when you consider it was one of the later additions to Laver's design, and definitely wasn't there from the start. The coat is all kinds of wrong, on multiple levels, not a cricket thing. And the hat? The hat's pretty good. For a variety of eras, not just limited to the Edwardian era where the Davison Doctor is most regularly placed fashion-wise, you could wear that Panama hat on the field and everything would be tickety-boo, as the Brits like to say. So, with all of this evidence on the table, including input from the man who designed the costume, no less, maybe the novels and the reference books should have described the Fifth Doctor thus. He wore the jumper, and sometimes the hat, of an Edwardian cricketer. So there you go. While Davo's costume has some cricketing flavour to be sure, to suggest that it's in any way a realistic interpretation of such is a bit of a fantasy. And maybe that's fitting for a fantasy TV series. I'll let you be the judge of that. Anyway, why not let me know your thoughts on Davo's choice of clothes down below in the comments.